Welcome to CCC Book Club. Today we are reading The Third Eye. So last is, um, bear in mind that we have nearly finished the book. Um, bear with us a little longer. Then hopefully we'll start a new book. And yeah. So masters, uh, I think we can like understand what chapter we're doing right now. So look at this. Da da, the secret of the North and Yetis. So masters, I'm also very excited because I don't even know what a Yeti is, and like I think it's like some story thing. Now let's go. During this time, we went to the Chang Tang Highlands. In this book, there's no time for more than a brief mention of this region. To do the expedition justice would require several books. The Dalai Lama had blessed each of the 15 members of the party, and we had all set off in high spirits, mounted by mules. Mules will go where horses will not. We made a slow way along Tengri so on the hue on to the huge lakes at Zilling Nor and the Eva northwards. The slow climb over the Tangla Range and on to unexplored territory. It is difficult to say how long we took because time meant nothing for us. There was no reason for us to hurry. We went at our own comfortable speed and saved our strength and energy for later excursions. As we made our way further and further into the highlands, the ground ever rising, and I was reminded of the face of the moon as seen through the large telescope at the Portala. Immense mountain ranges and deep canyons. Canyons. Here the vista was the same. The unending eternal mountains, the and cre crevices which seemed bottomless. We struggled on this on through this lunar landscape, finding the conditions becoming harder and harder. At last, the mules would could not go no farther. In the rare field air, they went soon. They were soon spent and could not manage to cross some of their rocky gorges. We where we swung dizzily at the end of a yak hair rope. In the most sheltered spot, we could find our left our mules and the five weakest members of the party stayed with them. They were sheltered from the worst blasts of the barren, wind-swept landscape by a spur of rock which towered upwards like a jagged wolf fang. At the base, there was a cave which softer rock had been eroded by time. A propitious path could have followed which would lead downwards to a valley where there was spare vegetation on the mules the on which the mules could feed. A tinkling steam dashed along the tableland and brushed over the edge of a cliff to fall thousands of feet below, so far that even the sound of it landing was lost. So masters, everything is happening right now. Um, also, I can't that much follow, but um, it's just like saying some secrets. And masters, you have to keep our ears pricked open for these secrets. Here, we rested for two days before plodding on higher and higher. Our backs ached with the loads we were carrying, and our lungs felt as if they would burst for want of air. On we went over crevices and ravines. Over many of them, we had to toss iron hooks to which ropes were attached. Toss and hope there would be to be a safe hole at the other side. We take turns to swing the rope with the hook and take turns to swarm across with, when a hole was secure. Once across, we had another end of rope so that when uh, all the party was negotiated the canon, the, canyon the, the rope also could be brought over by pulling on one end. 
sometimes we would get no hold. Then one of us would have um, the rope tied around his waist. And from the highest point we could reach, we'd try to swing like a pin pendulum, increasing the momentum with each swing. With one of us across the other side, he would have clamber at best horizon. We all took it in turns to do this as it was hard and dangerous work. One monk was killed doing it. He had climbed high on our end of the cliff, let himself swing. Apparently, he badly misjudged for his crash into the opposite wall, his terrible force, leaving his face and brains on the point of the jagged rocks. We hauled the body back and had a service for him. There was no way of burying the body in solid block. Rock. So we left him for the wind and the rain and the birds. The monk whose turn it was now did not look at all happy. So I went and said, it was obvious to me that in the view of the predictions about me, I should be quite safe and the fate would, was rewarded. My own thing was cautious, in spite of the prediction. And I reached with scram scrabbling fingers for the edge of the nearest rock. Only just did I manage to hang on and pull myself up, with the breath rasping my throat and the heart pounding as if to explode. For a time, I lay quite spent. Then I managed to crawl a painful way up the mountainside. The others, the best companions that anyone would could have, swung their other rope to give me the best possible chance of reaching it. With the, the, with the two ends now in my grasp, I made a secure and called out to them to pull hard and test it. One by one, they came over upside down hands, um, hands and linked and feet linked over the rope. Robes fluttered in the still breeze, and the breeze was impended us and did not help us breathing at all. At the top of the cliff, we rested a while and made our tea. Although at this altitude, the boiling point was slow, and the tea did not really warm us. Somewhat less tired, we again took up the loads and stumbled up onward in the, into the heart of this terrible region. Soon we came to a sheet of ice, a glacier maybe, and our process became even more difficult. We had no spiked boots and ice axes or mountain mountaineering equipment. Our only equipment consisted of an ordinary felt boot with the soles um, with the soles bound bound with hair affording some grip and ropes in the passing tibetan mythology was a cold hell warm warmth is a blessing to us so the opposite is cold hence the cold hill this trip to the highland showed me what cold could be after three days of sh this shuffling upwards over the ice sheet shivering in the bitter wind and wishing that we had never seen the, the place the glacier led us downwards between the towering rocks down and down we went fumbling and slipping down into an unknown depth Several miles farther on, we rounded, we rounded a shoulder of a mountain and saw before us a distant white fog. From the from a distance, we did not know if it was a snow or a, if it was snow or cloud. It was so white and unbroken. As we approached, we saw, saw it was indeed fog as tendrils kept breaking away and drifting off. The Lama Mingya Dondap said, the only one of us who, ha who had been here before smiled at satisfaction. You do look a cheerless lot. But you will have some pleasure now. We saw nothing pleasant before us. Fog. 
cold. Frozen ice below our feet and frozen sky above our head. Jack drops like a fangs of a novel smell. Rocks against which we had bruised ourselves. My guide said that we we were going to have some pleasure on the cold and clammy fog we went, miserably plodding. We knew not where. Hugging our robes about us for an illusion of warmth, panting and shuddering in the cold, with the cold, further and yet further in, and stopped, petrified with amazement and fright. The fog was becoming warm and the ground was glow growing hot. Those behind who had not reached so far and could not see bumped into us, recovered somewhat from a stupefaction by the Lama Mia Dunlap's laughter. We pushed forward again blindly, reaching out for the man ahead. The one in the feet in the lead feel feel unseeingly with with his Trust out, trust staff. Below our feet, stones threatened to trip us. Pebbles rolled underneath our boots. Stones? Pebbles? Then where was the glacier, the ice? Quite suddenly, the fog in, and we were through it. One by one, we fumbled our way into. Well, I, as I looked around me, I thought that I had died from cold and had been transported to the heavenly field. I rubbed my eyes with hot hands. I pinched myself and wrapped my knuckles again to see a rock if I, was a, if I was flesh or spirit. They looked, but then I looked about. My eight companions were with me. Could he all have been so suddenly transported? And if so, what, what, what about the tent? about the tenth member who had been killed against the rock face. So masters, it's 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 a little arm. Uh, is it a little arm? Very suspicious what's happening, right? So there's glacier ice and then suddenly it's hot. And were we worthy of the heaven I saw before us? The 30 heart Heart beats before we had shriveling with the cold on the other side of the fog curtain. Now we were on the edge of a collapse with the heat. The air shimmered and ground steamed. A steam at our feet bubbled out of the earth itself, propelled by gouts of steam. About us there was green glass greener than any I had ever seen before. Broad-leaved grass stood before me, knee-high. We were dazed and frightened. Here was magic, some, something quite beyond our experience. Then the Lama Minga turned up spoke. If I look like that when you first saw it, then I did look aside the fellows look as if i if you think the ice gods were are having a sport with you we looked about almost too frightened to move and then my guide spoke again let's jump over the stream jump over for the water is boiling boiling a few miles further then and we shall reach a really beautiful spot where we can rest so masses Right now, all they're doing is they're climbing something. A few miles further, and we should reach a really beautiful spot where we can rest. He was right as ever. About three miles on, we lay at full length if, if we were being boiled. Here, there were trees such as I had never seen before and probably never shall see again. Highly colored flowers bestewed everything. Climbing vines laced the tree trunks and depend, depended from the branches. Slightly to the right of the 
pleasant glade in which we rested, we could see a small lake of the ripples and circles on its surface, indicated the presence of a life within it. We felt still, we still felt bewitched. We were sure that they had been, we had been overcome with the heat and passed to another plane of existence. Or have we overcome with the cold? We did not know. So masters, still, they're very, very surprised. It, he, he was right as, as, um, we did not, the foliage was luxuriant. Now, um, there, I should, I have traveled, I should say that it was tropical. There were birds of a type even now strange to me. This was a volcanic territory. Hot springs bubbled from the ground and there were sculptures odors. My guide told us that there was, to his knowledge, two places only like this in the highlands. He said that the underground heat and the hot streams melted the ice and the high rock walls of the valley trapped the warm air. The dense white fog we had penetrated was the meeting place of the hot and the cold streams. We also told us he also told us that he had seen giant animals, animal skeletons, skeletons which in life must have supported an animal 20 or 30 feet high. Later, I saw bones myself. Here, I was had my first sight of a yeti. I was bending up picking herbs when something made me look up. There, within 10 yards of me, was the cre creature that I had heard so much about. Parents in Tibet often threateningly threaten naughty children with before behave yourself or a yeti will get you. Now I thought a yeti had got me and I was not happy about it. We had we looked at each other, both a fright both of us frozen with a fright of for a period which seemed ageless. It was pointing a hand to me and uttering a curious mewing noise, noise like a kitten. Their head seemed to have no frontal lobes but sloped back almost directly from the very heavy brows. The chin reset re greatly and the teeth were large and prominent. Yet the skull capacity measured similar to that of a modern man with an uh, expedition of a missing forehead. The hands and, and feet were large and splayed. The, the legs are bowed and the arms were much longer than normal. I had observed that the creature walked on the outer side of the feet as humans do. Apes and other of the order do not walk on outer surfaces. As I looked and perhaps jumped with fright on the other, on some other cause, the yeti screech turned away and turned and leaped away. It seemed to make one leg jump and the result was giant strides. My reaction was also to run in the opposite direction. Later thinking about it, I came to a conclusion that I must have broken the Tibetan spirit record for altitudes about 17,000 feet. Later, we saw a few yetis in the distance. They hastened to hide at the sight of us, and we seriously did not provoke them. The Lama Menga Dondap told us that these yetis were throwbacks of the human race who were taking their different part in evolution and who could only live in the most scheduled places. So, masters, Finally, they saw a yeti, and then the yeti um is uh it looks very um scary for him, but um it, uh um it actually actually realized that it's not scary.
later um quite frequently we heard tales of yetis who had left the highland and seen leaping around and bounding near inhabited regions there are tales of lone women who had been carried off by male yetis that may be one way in which they continue continue their line some certainly some nuns confirmed this for us later when they told uh, that the order had been carried away by a yeti in the night however um such things i have was not competent to write i can only say i have seen yeti and baby yetis i have also seen skeletons of them the masses it's very fascinating how lobes on grandpa also had seen um skeletons of um yetis quite brief some um people have expressed doubts about the truth of the statements concerning the yetis people have apparently written books of guesses about them but none of these authors have um none of these authors has seen one as they admit i have a few years ago ma Marconi was laughed as at when he said he, he was going to send a message by radio across the Atlantic. But then doctors solemnly asserted that the man could not travel at more than 50 miles an hour or he would die through the rush of air. There had been now tales of a fish which was said the rush of rush as to be a living fossil. Now scientists have seen them, captured them, dissected them, and if Western men had this his way, our poor old yetis would have been captured, dissected, and preserved in spirit. We believe that yetis have been driven to the highlands and said, and that elsewhere, except for infrequent wanderers, they are extinct. The first sight of one causes fright. Second time, one is filled with 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 compassion for these creatures of a bygone age, which are doomed to extinction through the strains of modern life. I am prepared with the communitist Artaish Dar of Tibet to accompany an expedition of the Skipits and show that the them the Yetis in the Highland. It would be worth to see. the faces of these big businessmen when confronted with something beyond their communal com miracle experience they use oxygen and berries i use old monk's robe cameras would will prove the truth we had no photography equipment in tibet in those days a legend relate that centuries years uh, centuries ago tibet had shores washed by the seas certain it is the fossil so fish and other marine animals are to be found in the surface surface of the earth is disturbed the chinese have a similar 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 belief the table the tablet of yu which formerly stood by on the kou kou lao peak of the mount heng in the province of hu pi records that the great yu rested upon the site in 2078 bc after his um labor of draining off the water of the deluge which at the time submerged all china except the highest lands the st- original stone i believe has been removed but there's a in imitation at wat chu chang fu place near han ko a further copy is in the yu lin temple near shao chang fu in chekang according to a belief tibet was once a low land by the sea and for reason beyond a certain knowledge there had been frightful earth convulsions during which many lands sank below the waters rose up 
as mountains. The Chang Thang Highlands were rich in fossils and in evidence that all of this area had been a seashore. Great shells of vivid colors, curious stone sponges, and ridges of coral or common. Gold too was here. Lumps of it could be eat, could be e picked up as easy as could be the pebbles. The water which flowed from the depth of the gold earth was were all temperatures from boiling gouts of stream to near um, freezing. It was a land of fantastic contrasts. Here they were hot, humid, astro atmospheres, uh, atmosphere, fear, such as we had never been experienced. A few yards away, just the other side of a fog curtain, there was a bitter cold that could sap life and render our body as brittle as glass. The rarest of rare herbs grew here, and for those alone, we has made this journey. Fruits were too Two fruits such as we had never seen. We tasted them, liked them, and satiated ourselves. Their plen the penalty was a hard one. During the night and the whole of the next day, we were too busy to gather herbs. Our stomachs were not used to such food. We left those fruits alone after that. We loaded ourselves to the limit with herbs and plants and retraced our footsteps through the fog. The cold that the other side was terrible. Probably all of us felt like turning black and living in a luxuriant valley. Our one llama was unable to face the cold again. A few hours after passing the fog curtain, he collapsed. And although we camped them in an effort to help him, he was beyond aid aid and went to the heavenly fields during the night. We did our best throughout that night. We tried to warm him, lying on each side of him. But the bitter cold um, of that arid region was too much. He slept and did not awake. So masters, with this, um, I'm getting like more excited because I also want to go to Tibet and file find gold and yetis hopefully so with this um we will jump into question and answers masters so let's first ask hatel yeah mukund like every day you have explained it well mukund you have explained it very well like every day yes and my if, uh I do not have any favorite part. I have a favorite part. If you want to know the favorite part, the favorite part is the first part. Uh, when uh, Mukun was, I mean, Lok Sang Grandpa was saying all the secrets. Oh, yeah, but this whole chapter is secrets only. Um, here, so I think um, you say we don't have favorite because the whole thing was favorite part for you, right? It was mostly. Yeah, thank you, Hazel. Um, it is an honor to have you here. Next is Josha. Um, I can't hear. I think you should leave and join the meeting again. <laughs> 